Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. If I don't believe God is sovereign, I cannot receive my life. And if I don't receive my life, I cannot have intimacy with God. And John wrote in The Sovereign Touch, We live in torment when we don't believe that God is sovereign. We are vulnerable to the world's chaos, and we are, quite frankly, not safe. Talk about scaring sheep. It is frightening when we are left hanging in the wind and our peace is destroyed. But thanking God in all things proclaims His Lordship to your world. It is a choice to trust Him because He is trustworthy rather than saving self and losing your life, giving thanks, abandon self to find your life. I'm Jacqueline. That's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. (laughs) If I don't believe God is sovereign, I cannot love my fellow man. I cannot I cannot love myself if I don't believe God is sovereign. It is the I keep saying it is the foundation, our very foundation. I cannot be content. I cannot be at peace if I don't believe God is sovereign. What I've seen in my own journey is without sovereignty Nothing can be received. Nothing can be resolved in my in my life personally. Because sovereignty brings me to every single issue and resolves every problem. And if God is not sovereign, there are no answers to my crises in life. There, there are simply no answers because God is the answer. In every situation, how he chooses to come, what he chooses to do is the answer. But apart from sovereignty, I will have no answers for my life. I will have no resolution. And I will be looking. And we're all, we all believe we're looking for love. And I believe that's true. But apart from sovereignty, you can't receive the love because sovereignty resolves our suspicions about God, resolves all of our trust issues. And you can't possibly love someone you don't trust. And you won't want to receive his love because you don't believe it's good. So you won't want his love. You'll want some some other thing, which we all chase after things in life. But sovereignty to me is just become one of the most wonderful things because it addresses the crucial issue of authority that we all struggle with and shows us what a loving authority we've been given. Kind, gracious, merciful. And so I I thank God for the whole issue of sovereignty and Martha's book, All and Only, and John's Sovereign Touch. John talks about contentment in his book. He says, there is no greater contentment than to know you are safe in the hands of an all-powerful God. You may not have understanding in the moment of crisis, but there is hope when you know your destiny is intact. You have joy and peace knowing Jesus rules over all, even the evil man. I wanted to just read a few of these titles that John has given. They're intriguing. If you read the chapter titles, it will promise the answer to a lot of things that we all have. Surrender to my story. My story needs a yes, doesn't it? A yes for me, and I can't give it without sovereignty. How intriguing. But I was just a child. (laughs) That's that's what we say. (laughs) I can laugh at some of these. They aren't really funny. A living narrative going rigid in trauma. (laughs) Why are we laughing? Because we know that. Life has hurt you. The witness of God's perfection. A life designed for knowing God. God's amazing hand of providence. My enemies only devour my flesh. Not my spirit, I think is what he means. Portrait of a life. What lurks behind our resistance? 
uh, and he takes on some pretty uh, heavy stuff, such as, what if your authority is corrupt? So you have to read the book to find out the answer. <laughs> Judgment and the Heavenly Man. Ooh, I don't remember that one. I need to go back. What about free will? God is in control, the world unshaken. And I, I used to say something that I wasn't sure it was true, but if, if, if it's everything is perfect, our God would change it. That's a big, big, tough pill to swallow. We're called to so share his sufferings so that we can be continually transformed in his, into his likeness, even into his death, in the hopes that while still living, we may attain to the resurrection of the dead. And without knowing his sovereignty, we cannot so share his sufferings. And John writes, the secret of suffering is only revealed to those who take the first step and thank God for it. You cannot thank God for your suffering if you don't know he's sovereign, if you, if you don't know he's in absolutely control of your life and your destiny. And I always have to go back to one of my favorite writers, Pierre de Cossade. It's an interesting story of that book. John and I were in Atlanta for something I don't remember. I guess it was to, oh, I know it was to see the play about the mystics. It had such an impact on John. We went to a bookstore, regular, normal bookstore. John looks up at this particular shelf and pulls a book out, a small book. And I, the name of it is The, the Practice of the Present Moment. Sacrament of the, the Sacrament of the Present Moment. Now, sacred means holy. So he pulls it out and he begins to read it, and then I get to read it. When we the ministry began, we ordered a big box of the, that book, and, and I'm always talking about it because uh, actually that book, out of all of our books, vanished. We have no idea what happened to it, but it vanished. But now John is reordered, and we have a nice stack of uh the Sacrament of the Present Moment. There are two different titles, but I'll stick with the Sacrament of the Present Moment. It means that this moment is your life and literally your God's sovereignty. The other title is Joy of Full Surrender. Okay. <clears throat> but actually, the book, though it doesn't ever, I don't think it ever says the word sovereign. In essence, it's about that's what it's about. This book teaches you to follow the, the um, obedience of the Lord to every moment that comes into your life. And that means it's sovereign. If it comes, it's God, and it's God's will. And so our, our re the real surrender is to everything he sends our way. I've lived with him long enough that I could give you a long list of what he brought my way that was sovereign, and most of it, but not all of it. I've come to understand the purpose and the meaning and the blessing and the reward of what he sends in his sovereignty. And I just realized as Martha was talking, only through sovereignty can you be grateful. Our, we're all, you know, have all of our... <laughs> murmurings in our lives. We all have things we don't care for, but the truth is once you get to sovereignty, then you can be grateful. I think apart from sovereignty, you can't be. It's not possible. Wow. Amen, John. John writes, what about these things that have wounded me deeply? The things I see as negative and cruel, which have fundamentally, fundamentally affected my life the wounds of my soul that have kept lasting effects. Should I thank God for these? Is this what he requires? Be thankful, whatever the circumstances may be. If you follow this advice, you will be working out the will of God expressed to you in Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 5.18 He writes, what I have learned often in the most painful ways is that God actually does work all things together for good for those who love him and who are called to his purpose. 
This includes the hurtful things and painful situations that have marked me. Again, God is totally sovereign or not sovereign at all. John often says, and it's the truth, uh, the sovereignty isn't a subject that Christians even want to know. They don't want to, they don't want to face the dilemma that John faced in his book and in his life. It is a dilemma that we all live and must resolve because it's crucial both to our relationship with God, to our impact on other people, and, and the, the issue of what we produce and say and speak in our life. So um, the biggest issue that John faced in, in this book is the political scene, and how to deal with that is God's sovereignty, and it's brilliant. One thing I've, I have found is the amazing, shocking, complete, and tender care of our sovereign God. I've been so amazed in the last few years, frankly, as a widow and as having some health problems, that everything, uh, he, he works our life like a puzzle that we don't have the picture of. And the pieces go in and we don't know the meaning of it. This happens and you're led there and in another dimension, in another place. And it makes for a... a a fascinating journey if we would accept it as a discovery of who God the Father really is and Christ the Shepherd. And you and as they Joan and John and Jacqueline have all agreed that you can't sovereignty solves everything. Because you you can learn to accept life by accepting him in what he's allowed to come. And, and I'll go back to the book of De Cassant. His whole writing is about accepting and surrendering to whatever comes into your life as from God. He doesn't throw around the word sovereign, <laughs> but it's all about sovereignty. It's ex sovereignty is accepting and believing in faith that God is in control and that it will be to my good and my blessing, ultimately. And things that seem like a catastrophe sometimes are turned into a glory. And my little book of uh, All and Only is the story of different characters in the Bible. Joseph, David, Saul. Uh, and it's about the, their experience of the sovereignty of God. So it's an ongoing message for Shulamite Ministries, and it's, it's our, I believe it's our major message, is that he is both sovereign and good. And the, I guess the one thing that so, has so more than any other is the great lie, which is really about his sovereignty and goodness. And uh, that has gone a, a lot of places. So we celebrate, we're still celebrating John's new book, and many, many copies have gone out, hundreds now, isn't it, into the hundreds. Cases and cases are being sent out. Isn't that exciting? The, the church is going to know sovereignty because of you, John, and know it more logically. Even in your book, it, it becomes reasonable. His sovereignty is not only the right thing, but it's reasonable. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.